much. And uh, thank you, Nick, for inviting me to come here to the launch of your two networks. Um, I didn't know the young Fabians was 50 this year. Long um, so does this mean I can call myself luck? <laughs> um, the reason why I think this is a, it's, um, a tremendously important time for people like you to get engaged in these issues is because as we come out of what's been we know, a really difficult economic world, Britain faces the possibility of really changing in a, in a positive way, but only if I think we have a sense of optimism about what it is that Britain can evolve to do. And for me, the two things which you've chosen for your net, technology and finance, are built upon really two areas where Britain already is a world leader. As science minister, um, it gives me tremendous pride that Britain does lead the world in terms of scientific productivity, better than the United States in terms of what we achieve with science, for the power which we invest in. We are still, despite all the turmoil, the world leading financial centre. Um, and so it is very important that young people at this point, coming up to the general election, fully engage in some of the big questions which we face and make their voices heard and shape policy. Because Britain is facing, I think, a big choice in this election that it is faced over a over generation. In the, in the recent past, we have had benign conditions of economic growth, whereby the investment which we've been able to make, for example, in that side space, has not had to come that choice of investment to come But in the future, in a condition whereby the, government, the next government, whoever that government is, its central challenge it's going to face is how to reduce the debt burden which the country has, whilst ensuring that the country progresses in a way which ensures that growth takes place, but in a way which is fair to society, which creates a society which is still coherent, and learns from some of the lessons of the past, the difficult um, lessons which were learned previously and make sure that the strengths that Britain has today are properly exploited to ensure that the future for us and for our children is a positive one. Now, I believe that this is more critical than ever because the questions about science and technology have a higher profile now than they've ever had. I think this will be the first election where science will be an election issue, true, because just speaking very politically for a moment, from the point of view of the Labour Party, questions of sustained investment in science and technology are central to our policy. As you saw yesterday in the budget, just this morning we were launching uh, a new centre here in London for medical research, 250 million pounds investment. And we're asking the question, but surely the argument about how can you justify continued spending on, on science and investment? in the economic condition. The answer to that is because that is the future for this country. We have got to make sure that we invest in those areas that Britain has real leadership. So that's for medical science, for physical science, for the humanities. The, the central challenges that we face as sort of um, progressive, how do we ensure that we meet the challenge of climate change? How do we ensure we meet the challenge of energy? How do we ensure we create a fair society where the opportunities for all enable us to fulfill the potential? Doing all of these things in an environment where public spending is going to be a lot tighter means that people are going to have to make some very difficult choices. And coming up in this election, I think there is going to be a choice between one party which sees that the transformation that we've seen in both our science community, and our position and our finance community are in the last 10 to 12 years has been very hard won. And if we are not very smart about the choices that we make about where we put that investment in the future in our science base, ensuring that the, the city here in the United Kingdom remains the global learning the lessons of, of the turmoil that we've been through. But we can clearly say that this is our future. The alternative is an alternative which is suggested where the answer is sort of unilateral cuts. 
where it's, it's not about making decisions about where to make those investments, as we did this morning, switching investments so that we could create this world centre of medical research. And I think that it requires a sense of energy, optimism, engagement and expertise, which your networks have. And this is why this, this is so important. We're in a